so I got myself some coffee so I can keep going, and uh, so maybe I don't have to clear my throat quite so often. Screencast 4 is called Short Run Costs, and this is the big one. This is the screencast where it all comes together for you or it doesn't, where I'm going to tie in a lot of the concepts that I've talked about already, and we finally get to the graph that is on the first screen of all these screencasts. Um, again, the goal in this unit is to understand what these lines are and why they look the way they do, and it's either going to happen for you here or it's not. So I don't want to be hard-ass about this or anything, but... Um, if this uh, screencast goes by and you didn't really get it, you really need to rewatch it as many times as it takes or to come in and ask questions to understand because this is the heart of the unit. So here we go. Now, so far we've talked about different types of costs and I've mentioned explicit and implicit costs. Excuse me. And you'll also remember that when I was discussing time periods in economics, the short run and the long run, I mentioned that there are fixed costs and variable costs. So here we're going to get a little bit more specific about what those are and what they mean. Along the way, we're going to see a bunch of formulas. And there's not a lot of memorizing in economics, one of the things I like about it. But these you actually do have to memorize. Now, at this point, I understand them conceptually. And you might get to the point where you also understand them conceptually and you won't have to memorize them. But if you don't, memorization will work too. All right, so let's start with fixed costs. A fixed cost is a cost that does not change regardless of how much you produce. For example, let's say you signed a year-long lease to open a manufacturing facility to produce a line of jeans. And let's say the lease costs $1,000 a month. Now, it doesn't matter whether you show up to work or not. It doesn't matter if you make 500 pairs of jeans or if you don't show up to work and you make no jeans. You have this cost of $1,000 a month and it's not going to change no matter how much you produce. You have to pay it. That's what a fixed cost is. So let's look at our first uh, few formulas. We're going to talk about what's called total fixed cost, abbreviated TFC, and average fixed cost, abbreviated AFC. Your average fixed cost is your fixed cost per unit of output that you produce. The formula is average fixed cost is equal to total fixed cost divided by quantity. And in this um, context, quantity is quantity of stuff produced. So for example, let's say you have a $1,000 lease and you produce 50 pairs of jeans. Your total fixed cost will be $1,000. Your average fixed cost would be that $1,000 divided by how many jeans you produced, or $20 in fixed cost per jeans. Okay, the other kind of costs are variable costs. A variable cost is a cost that does change as your production changes. So again, an example, you open a manufacturing facility to produce a line of jeans, and let's say that production process requires workers, cotton, and dye, as, as well as that lease. Now here, it matters how much you produce, at least in terms of the cost of workers, cotton, and dye. If you made zero jeans, those costs would be zero. You wouldn't have to hire anyone or buy any materials in order to make them. Producing 500 years, that should say jeans, sorry about that. Producing 500 jeans would take some amount of those things, and producing 1,000 of them would require even more, more. So the costs for workers, cotton, and dye are variable costs. They're costs that change the more you produce. So here are the formulas. Total variable cost, abbreviated TVC. Average variable cost, abbreviated AVC. Average variable costs are your variable costs per unit of output you, that you produce. The formula for AVC is total variable cost divided by quantity. So again, an example. You produce 50 pairs of jeans, and let's say that the cost of your workers, cotton, and dye to produce those jeans were $400. I would say that your total variable costs were $400, and your average variable costs would be the $400 divided by the quantity of jeans you produced, which would be $8 in variable costs per pair of jeans. Finally, or not finally, but next, total costs. When you add all of your fixed costs to all of your variable costs, you get your total costs. Total cost, abbreviated TC, is equal to TFC plus TVC, your total fixed costs plus your total variable costs. Average total costs, 
is your total cost of production per unit produced. The formula for average total cost is total cost divided by quantity. Or alternatively, average total cost is equal to your average fixed costs plus your average variable costs. Now really finally, marginal costs. And by the way, the most important of the acronyms you're going to see today. Marginal cost, like any other marginal, is about what happens when things change. It's how much more it costs to produce one more unit of, an, of output. The formula for marginal cost is the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity produced. In other words, it's the change in total costs when producing one more unit of output. All right, little summary screen. You saw a bunch of acronyms. Here they are. TFC, TVC, TC, those are your total costs. AFC, AVC, uh, ATC, those are your average costs. And then we have these marginal costs. Now when we graph these out, and uh, we're going to be doing this in class and you're going to be doing this online, so I'm hoping that these graphs will become very familiar to you. They almost always look the same. Total fixed costs are going to look like this. That makes sense. Total fixed costs don't change. No matter how much you produce, and notice we have quantity on the x-axis, those costs stay the same. If you have $1,000 a lease, it would be $1,000 whether you're producing one unit or 100 units. That's what a fixed cost is. Total variable costs tend to go up the more you produce. As you continue to produce genes, you need more workers, you need more cotton, you need more dye. And so total variable costs tend to rise as quantity rises. Now, if you look back to the formula, you'll remember that if you add total fixed costs with total variable costs, you get your total costs. Well, look at any quantity. Let's say this quantity right here. Here's what your variable costs are, this much at this quantity. Fixed costs don't change. They're this much, right? Maybe $1,000 for a $1,000 lease. So if we add this vertical distance right here, which is about this much, to our variable costs, we get our total costs. That vertical distance between the total cost curve and the total variable cost curve is equal to total fixed costs. Now the total graph is kind of important, but much more important is the next graph, the averages and the marginals. Let's start with the least important curve in this graph, average fixed costs. Average fixed costs when graphed out is always going to look like this. Notice that it's dropping and it just keeps on dropping. And you can think about that, why that would be. If you have a fixed cost of $1,000, the more you produce, the more you're dividing it by higher and higher numbers. You're taking that constant number of $1,000 and dividing it first by a very small number and then higher and higher and higher numbers. As a result, average fixed costs will drop and eventually it'll go asymptotic to the x-axis. It'll get smaller and smaller, but it'll never touch it. Now I'm personally very dubious about the whole concept of asymptotes. I have a feeling that when you look away they eventually do touch just for a second. But the mathematicians tell me that that's not true. So this line will get closer and closer to the x-axis, but it'll never touch it. All right, interesting enough, but in truth, average fixed cost isn't a particularly important cost curve. What are important are the next uh, three that come along. Marginal cost is gonna look like this, kind of like a Nike swoosh. It goes down and then it goes up. We'll talk about why that is in a minute. When you graph out average variable cost and average total cost, they'll wind up looking like this. And you can compare this to the first screen in every screencast, and you'll notice that this is the graph that we've been going for this entire time. So it's really important to understand why this graph looks the way it does. And to understand it, you have to go back to the concepts you learned in the first three screencasts. So I'm going to try to be really explicit about this, but again, if you don't get it, come in for help or rewatch the video or do something, yoga, I don't know, whatever will help you understand this.
It turns out that the production relationships that we were looking at in the first couple of screencasts, think back to Tina's pillow head factory, determine what the costs for a business look like. Now the idea is that in general, the more productive the, your workers are, the more productive your resources are, the lower your costs will be. In other words, if you are really awesome workers, the cost of producing stuff isn't going to be that high. And if you have not so awesome workers, workers that are terrible, it's going to cost you more to produce. Now that's intuitive, but let me show you why that is. Now assume that Tina's Pillow Pet Factory uses workers that cost $10 each. So I've taken that same table we were working with in the first few screencasts, only for the first three workers, and I've replaced the last column with marginal cost. Now the first worker increases output by five, has a marginal product value of five, and that first worker costs $10 to hire. So each pillow pet that that first worker makes is costing $2. Five pillow pets divided by the $10 it costs to hire that worker, or $2 per pillow pet. So the marginal cost, or how much more your costs are going to go up, for each of those pillow pets produced is going to be $2. Now notice that that second worker has a higher marginal product, a marginal product of 10. But that second worker, again, only cost $10 to hire. That second worker was just as expensive as the first worker but the second worker is producing more. So if you take those 10 pillow pets and divide it by the cost of that second worker, which is $10, you'll notice that each of those next 10 pillow pets was only costing a dollar more to make. The marginal cost of each one of those pillow pets was only a dollar. As the worker, that second worker, got more productive than the first worker, the cost of each pillow pet that second worker was producing was dropping. In other words, when marginal product goes up, when your workers get more awesome, marginal cost goes down. And in fact, we could say something more metaphorical about it. Marginal product and marginal cost are mirror images of one another. Remember what marginal product looked like. It went up, it hit a peak, and then it started to drop. Well, notice that marginal cost looks exactly the opposite of marginal product. It falls, it hits a bottom, and then goes up. Here, your workers are getting more awesome, and your costs are dropping. As soon as your workers start getting less awesome, your costs start rising. Now, we've talked about why it is that marginal product eventually begins to drop. Remember, the law of diminishing marginal returns. At some point, right here, at the peak of the marginal product curve, the workers are starting to get crowded, they're starting to wait for machines, the productivity of those workers is starting to fall. And as those workers start to get less awesome from here on, the costs of each of the units they produce is going to start to go up. So marginal product and marginal cost are mirror images of one another. And since the law of diminishing marginal returns eventually makes marginal product fall, it's the same force, the same concept, the same law that's making marginal cost eventually start to rise. So we can credit the law of diminishing marginal returns for the marginal product curve looking the way it does. And we could also credit the law of diminishing marginal returns for making the marginal cost curve look the way it does as well. All right, well, now let's go back to our graph. What we've come to so far is that marginal product is eventually going to rise due to that law of diminishing marginal returns. In this graph, you can see the law of diminishing marginal returns starting right here at the bottom of the marginal cost curve. Here's where your workers were most productive. And again, as those workers got less productive, as we entered the law of diminishing marginal returns, costs started to rise. As a result of that, marginal cost always has to look this way eventually it always has to start to rise. So we've explained the shape of that orange curve, the marginal cost curve. Let's get to the other two curves. You'll notice that marginal cost crosses both average variable cost and average total cost at the very bottom of those curves. 
You'll remember back in the last screencast, I said that marginals acted like magnets to averages. Well, the same kind of force, the same magnet action is at work here. Notice that as long as that orange line is below the blue, uh, I'm sorry, the green line and the brown line, those green lines and brown lines are dropping. The orange line is pulling them down. And when the orange line, the marginal, is above the average lines, the green one and the brown one, that orange marginal line is pulling them up. So for the same reason that marginal product had to cross average product at the peak of the average product curve, marginal cost has to cross average variable cost and average total cost at the very minimums of those curves. So I'm hoping you can see how the law of diminishing marginal returns basically forces these three curves to look the way they do. The law of diminishing marginal returns is forcing the marginal cost curve to start rising. And then the magnet action is in effect. That marginal cost curve is pulling the average curves in their direction. All right, again, very importantly, the marginal product, I'm sorry, the marginal cost curve is crossing the average variable cost curve at the bottom of that curve and it's crossing the bottom, um, sorry, it's crossing the average total cost curve at the bottom of that curve. And that will always be true. Mathematically, it has to be true because marginals act like magnets to averages. All right, again, pretty dense. If you didn't understand it, come in, ask for help, rewatch it, do yoga, whatever. Do what you need to do. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah.